What's good, Ken Gonda? This is O'Shea Duke Jackson back with another episode of Ken Gonda Connect. And today we are joined by a nice young lady who is from Uganda, but now living in uh, in Europe. I will let her explain and pronounce her name and everything. I'll mess it up. Uh, go ahead and tell them who you are. Hey, thank you for having me, Kenganda Oshe. My name is Faye, Faye Kakai, and um, I'm a YouTuber as well. My channel is Huchenda, which means travel in Lugisu, my mother tongue. So I'm from Uganda. I'm from Mbale, and uh, yeah, that's who I am. All right. So, and thank you for you know reaching out to us. Uh, we tried to do this a few times and. I messed up, and you. Know, but, but I'm glad that we're able to finally do it today. Yeah, um, me too. Tell us a little bit about about yourself, because obviously you're from Mbale, which is in the mm -hmm. this is in the west, right? That's eastern Uganda. Eastern Uganda, okay. Yes, in eastern Uganda. Yeah. Um, so, how did you end up in Europe? Okay, so a little bit about myself. I'm from Mbale, like I mentioned, but I grew up in Kampala. Mm -hmm. and uh, I've always loved travel. So that's what the channel is about. I mentioned Huchenda means travel in Lugesu. And uh, I did, and so for my undergrad, I'm currently studying in Europe. For my undergrad, I went to study in Malaysia. I lived in Asia for three years, uh, came back to Uganda, worked in Uganda, and then I got an opportunity to come and do a master's degree in Europe. So I'm currently in Europe doing an MA in digital media communication and journalism. And so that's why I'm here. But while I'm here, I also just love to explore as much as I can, when I can. I On my channel, I really talk a lot about like traveling on a budget, okay. play, uh, saving, planning for travel, because mm -hmm. I really just believe in making the most of every opportunity mm -hmm. and just exploring, exploring as much as you can. Okay. Now, yeah. We were talking a little bit earlier, and I know that you were um, you you did your undergrad living in Malaysia. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now let me talk about this because you've been all over the world um, and traveled. How? Because the name of the show is how Europeans view Africans. But let me talk about this because you're from you know Eastern Uganda, and Kampala has a you know it's a city with a lot of different tribes, a lot of different people just in the melting pot. How do Ugandans or other Africans view each other, first of all, in your opinion? I think um, the thing about uh, being Ugandan, and Uga let me just uh, speak from the Ugandan perspective. Mm -hmm. We view each other as brothers and sisters. I think mm -hmm. one thing that maybe uh, you've noticed is that Uganda is one of the friendliest countries in the world. We're very oh, communal. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that saying, it's an African saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And that's what mm -hmm. it is. Everyone is your auntie. Every, every friend of your mom is your auntie and every friend of your dad is, is your uncle. And mm -hmm. so it's very communal. It's very family oriented. We grew up as family. We're really all the same. And I don't think, yes, there are uh, class differences, mm -hmm. but for the most part, um, we really just look at each other as, as one. Um, that said, there is tribalism, like you mentioned, there's a lot of tribes and there is a, a, a tribalism that happens, which is an issue that I feel we really need to work on in Uganda. But for the most part, I would say we just view each other as brothers and sisters. We're all the same. We all look the same. You know, majority of Ugandans are black. So if not all, so we're really just one and the same. We don't have, you know, a lot of divisions like elsewhere in the world. I see. Yeah. But when you're able to, we'll start with Malaysia yeah. uh, and then we'll move to Europe. When you went to Malaysia, I know also it's a majority, I believe it's a Muslim country. Yes. Yes. H how are you treated in Malaysia? Um, you know, I, I obviously with, uh, with, with, with in comparison or contrasting it to um, Uganda. Okay, so you mean like in the context of being an African in Malaysia? Yes. yes. Yeah, so I think one of the things about Malaysia was at least the university that I was in, there was a really big African student population. So we had a lot of uh, students from Uganda, from Kenya, from South Africa, from Zimbabwe, and there was that community uh, of Africans. I feel like it was really strong in the sense that a lot of Africans 
would hang out together, they would spend time together. And I, I was more shielded from how we are looked at as compared to now in Europe. And I guess we'll, we'll get to that later on. Mm -hmm. But uh, back to your question of, your question was how did I, how what, could you just repeat the question? How did I? See yeah. How, how, how do you feel that Malaysians are yeah. the people there? Yeah. View, view the viewed Africans or view yeah, the okay. people that are studying there? Yeah. There was a lot that they didn't know, I would say. Like, mm. there was a lot of ignorance. It was like, in the sense of, I think they just didn't know much about Africa. And like I mentioned, would we kind of stuck, which now when I look back at it, it was really unfortunate, but we kind of stuck to communities like the Malaysians would hang with each other and, and the Africans would hang with each other. And I think there was just this fear of they didn't know. And sometimes people are afraid to ask. But I remember like, you know, I had a few Malaysian friends and would have conversations or even just classmates. And they really had no idea. They had no idea where Uganda was. They would ask me if I'm Nigerian, if Uganda is in Nigeria. So there was just a lack of knowledge a lack of knowledge and the, the, it kind of created this barrier. That's what I, I, that's how my experience was there. Okay. Yeah. So after Malaysia, what happened? You moved to after Europe? Malaysia, you moved back here? Yeah. After Malaysia, once I started my degree, I moved back to Uganda and I was working with you, working in Uganda for a couple of years. Before. Well, how was that experience? It was great, um, and it was just, you know, it was good to be back home. I quickly started working. Um, it was a good experience, and then while I was in Uganda still, I just had this, I, I think it's after I started working that I really got this travel bug and this urge to travel more, and so I really started exploring Uganda, documenting um, the like beauty that's in Uganda, going to different regions, writing about that, uh, showcasing that on the blog, on my Instagram as well. So it was really lovely. Um, I think also one thing that I'll say is there was, there's just something about coming back home. Uh, I feel like a lot of times when we are home, um, we always want to, to go far. We want to travel abroad. And then there's something about coming back and appreciating home you know, appreciating the weather, appreciating the food. And mm -hmm. so it's only, I think, after being away for three years and also traveling a little bit to other countries for short trips that I really got this like new desire to explore Uganda, to showcase Uganda's beauty and also seeing how little people knew outside Uganda about Uganda. I wanted to show that, hey, look, it's not just slums and it's not just, you know, dusty roads and stuff. We have, so we're gifted by, by God with nature. We have waterfalls, parks and all that stuff. So it's like, it was for myself, but also I wanted people to see how beautiful Uganda is. Now, let me ask you um, one question about, you talked about how the African community united in Malaysia, and it seems to me it was a very positive experience for you. Yeah. When you moved to, to Europe, I believe you were in Greece, right? Yes. Was there an African community there? They wasn't. That, uh, they wasn't. Oh, and that was okay. awakening for me because it was so different from my Malaysia experience. And I think I almost took that for granted. I, always, I almost took it for granted that, you know, um, there'll be other black people, there'll be other um, Africans, uh, just because that had been my experience in Malaysia, but it was completely different. Um, in Greece, where I was, I, I, I was living in a city called Thessaloniki, which is in northern Greece. And there are very few African people living there. And, um, and even if you do see Africans, they are not, how do I say, like they're not in the society. They're not working. They're not studying. Maybe there are a few that are immigrants. Like the, you really see that the, the difference in class. They're not part of... They're not like assimilated into uh, society. So it was an awkward experience for me because I'd get a lot of stares from people. You know, I'd get on the bus and everyone is looking at me. Uh, there was just so much curiosity. And I quickly realized that um, people are not used to seeing me. They were not used to seeing people like me uh, going to school in Greece or, you know, just being a part of the community, I guess, in that sense. 
when you were receiving those stares, how did mm -hmm. that make you feel? At first, I didn't really pay much attention, you know. Um, it was just, it was like, okay, you know, you're staring at me. I'll stare back at you. Uh, I'll let you know that what you're doing is rude just with my eyes, you know, like I'll stare back, but then it it's constant, it's constant. And then, you know, at, at some point it becomes really irritating because it's like, okay, fine, maybe you don't see a lot of black people, but you know, and there were other experiences, not just the stairs. So I kept having like different experiences. I actually faced blatant racism, like housing discrimination, where I was kicked out of an uh, apartment because I was told the neighbors didn't like me. And it was really just because of the color of my skin. So for me, that was an awakening. It was like, oh my God, like I am viewed differently. I'm not viewed like anybody else. Um, and I just started becoming more aware to these things that we, you know, back home, you just see, you'd read about like stories in America, you know, with all the different things that have been happening. And it was kind of like, I, I understood it more. I understood it more, especially having gone to like actual, you know, blatant racism where someone says you can't live here because of the color of your skin, that type of thing. So it was difficult uh, to answer the question, how did I feel? It was difficult, but I guess you just develop like a tough skin. And for me, it's a lesson. Like I feel like every experience teaches you something, whether it's good or it's bad, you learn something, you learn more about the world and then you're in a better position to empathize with other people as well, because you know what it feels like. Well, let me ask you about um, some of the questions that one may ask you about, because I know a lot of times, because even me, uh, I would be ignorant to like, were Uganda? Where is Uganda at? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know, I know you guys uh, have gotten that before, but when you talk to the people that were, you know, in, in Greece, what were some of the questions that they asked you? Oh, okay. You felt so, like, really? <laughs> some of them are really funny. You know, sometimes all you can do is laugh. But they're, they also, it's like, really? Like, don't you have Google or the internet? So the most ridiculous one, and I think for me what makes it ridiculous is because of the person who it's coming from, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe if a child asked me uh, a question, I it wouldn't be that ridiculous. But when it's a, a grown university graduate, that's when it becomes really ridiculous. So this was a university graduate and she asked me, uh, she asked me where I'm from. I told her I'm from Uganda. And then she asked me if I got to Uganda by pl by plane. And so it was kind of like, how else would I have got here? She's like, did you fly here? Did you come here by a plane? And, you know, sort of insinuating that does Uganda have airports or does Uganda have airplanes or, you know, have you ever been on an airplane? You're an African. That's how the question sounded to me. So, yeah, usually I just say something sarcastic. Like, I'll be like, no, I'm a really good swimmer. Like, I swam here. <laughs> but, yeah, and then the kind of, you know, she realized that, yeah, of course, of course I came by plane. Um, what else have I been asked? Uh, so that's the one that's, that stands out. I also get a lot of questions where, I used to get a lot of questions that were like, um, so what is it like in Uganda? Someone asked me, what is it like to live in a country and live with animals? Hmm. And I think I'd been talking about my blog and I was talking about, because uh, I, like I mentioned, I did a lot of like, showcasing national parks and things like that. So she sh saw some pictures where I was in a national park with like zebras and giraffes and stuff. So she's like, what is it like to live with animals? And I'm like, this is a, a national park. It's not like, you know, we ride them <laughs> to town or something like the mm -hmm. designated areas. So I just realized that they, that didn't even click. Like they see the pictures with animals in national parks and maybe they assume that we like all live together in this community <laughs> or something, which I would think is obvious. But yeah. it's not that obvious. So that's the stuff that was really, yeah, those are the, like, those are the most bizarre questions, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that, yeah. Let me ask you this also. I saw that, uh, I, I want to look at your blog, Revolve blog. I'm subscribed mm -hmm. to your channel. Seems like you're able to make uh, some friends. Yes. Uh, I, I see you going out with, uh, <laughs> you know, several Greek people and things like that. Yeah. Um, what was the positive experiences about uh, making friends in the international community that were not black? 
Yeah. Oh no, I did have a lot of positive experiences. So one thing that I I want people to know is as much as I talk about the bizarre things and just realizing that there's this sort of discrimination or that I'm viewed differently, there also there were also several positive experiences. Generally, Greek people are nice. They're very nice. We have a lot of similarities in uh, in in terms of our culture. Greek people are also very family oriented, and they're also friendly people. So, for them, I think it's just what causes some of the things that I've been talking about is just a lack of knowledge. But they are generally nice people. So, um, like I mentioned, as only um, African. We're two Africans in my class, so all my other classmates were, most of them are Greek and some are from other uh, countries in Europe. And I mm. did make some really uh, good connections. I did make some really good friends. Um, we did travel together. We did do things together. And also one of the things that I'm always, uh, why I always encourage people to travel is to have connections like all over the world, because I feel like that does uh, come in handy. It helps with travel. For example, I have a, a friend who uh, uh, lives in Germany and she came over and we traveled together. So it's just good to have friends from different parts of the world. And it's through those friendships that you actually learn more about like the cultures and more about the people. So um, I don't know, I, I think I kind of went off from your question, but yeah, I did mm -hmm. have some great positive experiences. I made some friends, some good connections and we did travel and we did enjoy the country, you know, as much as we could. So, it, you know, obviously, um, like living there in Europe, I guess what I want to ask you is this, because a lot of people, when they ask me, mm -hmm. like, where am I from? I tell them the United States of America. They say, like, like, why are you here? I'm trying to get to the United States. Like, why are you in Uganda? Like, yeah. You know, and I went to the U.S. Embassy, which is not too far from Kansanga. And, um, you know, you see people all the time, like, lined up outside trying to get an interview to get a visa. But one of the things I want to know, because a lot of times when I come here, I'm like, wow, the, the opportunities are here. Like, yeah, I, I want to ask you this also. I'm sorry for beating around the bush. That's OK. You, you mentioned that you, you know, when you left Uganda, you kind of felt like, you know what? I kind of took Uganda for granted a little bit. Yeah. Well, what what do you really mean when you say that? Because uh, I think a lot of the diaspora that has left, and I see got people from Uganda commenting. You know, they're from Waltham, the that that diaspora, the DMB, yeah. Los Angeles. They're they're wanting to come back home, or wanting, or, or kind of wishing that they would have took a little bit more, um, appreciated it more. What yeah. do you mean when you say that? You know, you kind of took Uganda for granted. Everything. We have, oh my God, I could go on and on about the good things about Uganda, but we have the best weather in the world. I didn't really understand what that meant because I used to people so Uganda has perfect weather. And I, I thought that that meant that it's sunny the whole year because we don't have, you know, winter. It's just rainy and dry seasons, but the temp, it's pretty sunny the whole year. But it's not just the fact that it's sunny. It's the fact that it's like, it's, it's not too hot. It doesn't go to the extremes, you know. It will be 25, 26 degrees Celsius most of the time. And yet in Greece, for example, you know, I had to experience winter. I hadn't experienced winter in a very long time. And so it's just those extreme temperatures and then the summers get really hot. So um, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but right now I'm in France, but when I left Greece, it was like 38 degrees, uh, 37 degrees, 39 going on 40. So it was really, really hot and uncomfortable. So one of the things that we do take for granted is just the fact that the weather is good pretty much all the time. Even when it rains, it rains for a short time and then the sun is out. Um, we take the food for granted. I really miss Ugandan pineapples. I miss mm -hmm. avocados. I miss a lot of the fruits that we have, organic, fresh food, you know, all year round. Um, and even just that sense of community that I was talking about, you know, that sense of community, um, being around family, being around friends, even though even though it could be, let's say, extended family or maybe people that you haven't known for that long, there's a way in which, as Ugandans, we embrace each other. And so those are some of the things that we take for granted. And also, I guess the major thing, which is in relation to the question you asked me earlier, is being around people who view you 
I guess the same way you view yourself, which is like any other human being and not like this, like, I don't know, like this either exotic or strange. How did you get here? What are you doing here? You know, like someone looks at you and it's just question marks on their face as mm. opposed to just, you know, just just being like, just blending in and fitting in. So there's that. That's, well. a, that's the best thing I like about being in Uganda is yeah. you just go out, you, you, you blend in, nobody bothers you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I actually, I'm still currently living in, in Poland. Obviously, I'm stuck here, but those mm-hmm. stairs, yeah, Poland's probably a, a lot. It could be a lot worse than Greece. Uh, I've, you know, I've had some nasty, nasty situations, uh, you know, going there. And um, and when I when I can get a chance to come to Uganda, uh, I always take it because yeah, I, I have I don't have that feeling like somebody's watching me or. Yeah. You know, somebody doesn't want me to be there. Somebody think I'm trying yeah. to take take their women or something like that. I just don't. I don't get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no. I was just saying those are things I miss about. Those are things we take for granted in Uganda. Well, let me ask you this because I know that for you, you you were able to come back and start working. You you got a chance to go away on a on a scholarship to get a master's. Uh, but I, but I know that you 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 want to come back, but there's so many of the blacks and even from the black community in in, in America. Now I mm-hmm. came from a kind of a impoverished community, and people come and they go out into the you know the greater university of the world, and they move out to the better areas. They don't want to mm-hmm. come back to the black communities. Uh, and the same thing for some of the brothers and sisters that come from Uganda. They immigrate to London. They immigrate to the West. They immigrate to you know the USA. And yeah. uh, and and they don't want to come back. Um, why do you think so so many of the the brightest and talented people that come from Uganda yeah. um, are hesitant about making the move to come back and live? I think it's probably, and I think it really depends on where exactly you are, you know, in the world. Like where they are, where it is that they want to move to and live. But the fact is. Um, Uganda is not a perfect country, just like any other country. Uh, there are issues in Uganda. There's a lot of unemployment in Uganda. And I think a lot of people are really just looking for a better life for themselves, like better opportunity. You know, uh, you find a lot of the countries in Europe and abroad, they have things like minimum wage, which we don't have in Uganda. So mm-hmm. someone just looks at how much they can earn abroad compared to maybe what the possibilities and opportunities are back home Mm -hmm. and just looking at those it's like okay i think i can have a better life also other things like education the education system our Mm -hmm. education system isn't the best you know it's like it's a it's a really old like archaic um type of education from colonial days where kids are kind of taught to obey orders and do as they're told as opposed to like thinking and innovating. So I think in terms of like families and parents, sometimes it, that's the stuff they're, they're thinking of, um, opportunities for their children, a better education for their, for their children, maybe access to better health care. Um, I've also had people say, you know, they would, they um, want to live abroad. I've talked to people and it's because maybe I know someone, for example, whose child has a health condition and they just feel like their child will get better medical services abroad uh, compared to back home. So it's real issues like that, which we can't ignore. You know, Uh, many times I'm talking about Chicago, I'm talking about the sunshine and the weather and the food. But when it comes to just, uh, you know, things like healthcare, education, I think people do choose to do that because uh, choose to live abroad because that they're hoping for better. I see. Yeah. For you, because obviously you'll have the European Union degree, which means that, you know, once you finish, it's a good chance that you can stay. Uh, Will you decide to, you know what, you know, the European Union is um, a lot of opportunity there, obviously. Mm -hmm. Euro is strong. Yeah. Do you think that, that, that you can get an offer enough, good enough to stay? Where it's more, st- you know, stability, or or do you think that you could come back and, yeah, try I your try- entrepreneurship skills here? Yeah, I try to stay as open minded as I possibly can. 
So mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not stuck in stone that, oh, I have to go back home. And it's also not stuck in stone that I have to stay here. So I just try to stay open. Um, if, if I do have a better opportunity here, then I see no reason to rush back. Maybe I'll stay here a little longer. Um, I've always, I've always liked the idea of uh, living on two continents, you know, uh, splitting time between two different continents. So who knows? I mean, I always, like we say back home, God willing, uh, depending on what God wills, we'll see where I end up. But I love to stay open-minded. Um, I have no problem uh, living in Uganda. I love Uganda. and But I'm also open to the possibilities and the opportunities that could exist here as well. So I can't really answer that question right now. Let me ask you this. Do you think that Uganda is improving as far as the markets, the... The yeah. opportunities. Do you think yeah, it's I cool? think there's a lot of opportunity, especially if you're entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of person who is um, entrepreneurial, you want to do business. It's like there's a there are a lot of virgin areas uh, uh, that someone can invest in and do business. Mm -hmm. But if your mindset is uh, get a job, get a job, get a job, then it's tough mm -hmm. because, like I mentioned, the unemployment rate is high. Right. So it really just depends on how you look at things. Um, but in terms of, is it improving? It is getting better, but then there's a lot that's also holding us back. Mm -hmm. um, to, and that's stuff that, I mean, I'm no expert on, but just our politics and our governance and things like that, there's a lot that's holding us back. But I think mm -hmm. it is improving and there is a lot of opportunity, especially for business, uh, entrepreneurs, investment and stuff like that. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, for those people who are going to come in and see uh, you on the channel and subscribe, I'm pretty sure this video will do pretty well. When they subscribe to your channel, what what are they going to get? What 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 what, what will your channel? Um, who is your channel for? Ah, okay. So my channel is for people like me, um, Ugandans, Africans. Uh, back home in the diaspora who love to travel, who want to travel, who are curious about travel, who are curious about the world. And so what I do on my channel is I really uh, do my best to showcase different places, uh, regardless of where I am. So uh, when I was in Greece, I was showing a lot about uh, showing different places in Greece, places to travel to, travel tips. Right now I'm in France, so someone can look forward to a lot of travel vlogs in France, uh, what the French culture is like, French food, um, places to visit. And so it's really all about travel, travel stories, my experiences. I do a lot of like story times as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and recently it has been in that context as an African abroad or an African in Europe. Um, tips, inspiration, how to plan for travel, how to save for travel. One of the things I noticed back home is that uh, as Ugandans, it's getting better now, but we really didn't have that culture, that adventurous culture. And I, I'm always telling people, and I believe that travel is the best way to learn. And so it's all about travel. And I try to encourage and help people who want to travel, but they don't know how. So I talk about budget travel. I talk about solo travel. And yeah, just anything travel. So if you're curious about the world, if you're curious about Europe, if you're curious about Uganda, if you want to see different places and know how you can get to those places, then yeah, uh, you should, they whoever is watching this should definitely subscribe. All right, you've heard it there. <laughs> Go to the first comment pinned to the top, and you can subscribe to the Faye Kakai YouTube channel. Yeah, and I definitely thank you for coming on. Any last words you want to say while we wrap it up? No, I just thank you so much for hosting me. And I love what you're doing on your channel as well. I think it's really important to have more African content on the internet uh, so that, you know, we can tell our own stories. We can, mm -hmm. as, as Africans, as um, uh, people in Africa, as uh, Black Americans in Africa, we can tell our stories, talk about our experiences and share with each other. So... Yeah, I just love what you're doing, and I want to encourage whoever's watching this to always be curious, um, step out of your comfort zone, travel, learn more about the world. And yeah, that's really what I'm about, living life, living life to the full, and how I do that is through travel. All right, and I know that you are a, a, a good fan, a big fan, a fan now of DJ yeah. Alicia. Yeah. So... <laughs> 
we have a Ugandan mix coming on Sunday. So uh, for those Ugandans uh, yeah. in the diaspora, you know, we want to give you a, a, a treat. So, um, you know, we we got that and uh, we'll, we'll have a really good mix for you guys on uh, on Sunday on Club King Ghana. Again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, thank hopefully we'll do this again very soon. Yeah, um, I'd love to. All right. And so don't forget to go and subscribe to her. First comment pinned to the top. Keep it real. Can Ghana forever. We're out. Peace.